talking about to, approachability. To new people, because again, the goal of any business, and, I, and really you think of it like the store, right? I want people to try new games. Yeah. And this has been the battle that you have frequently, which is people go, I want to try it, but, but but it looks like, you know, and with the sheer number of mechanics now in Magic. Yeah. Right? The different things, right? Like, you know, especially with the stuff that comes in with, like, Phyrexian stuff. Oh, man, yeah. Okay? Like, and so especially where it's like, how do you how do you bridge that gap to get players to play? Yeah. Right. Um, like somebody's like, would you would it be worth having to learn to ma play Magic Day? So the problem is, is that you can schedule those and you'll get a couple of people. Yep. But it's hard. Where those work really well is conventions. Uh, I do. worked those actually as a judge. So I worked Emerald City Comic Con uh, mm -hmm. recently. And I was there as a judge. I was paid by the tournament organizer uh, who was helping run events. And it was interesting. You talk about, you know, sometimes you have weird relationships with contractors and that sort of thing. We went into the space. They were given a room with a fifth of the seating capacity that they were promised. Mm -hmm. So they had a room that fire code could seat like 75. And okay. they were supposed to have over 400. And they basically just had to cancel half the events they had planned. Because like, we can't seat anyone. Uh, and so they totally rearranged what they were doing. But what I did, Ishtar, to your point, was I just taught people to play magic because people wandered in from the thing they were already at, and it was it's the right crowd. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna get a crowd to learn how to play magic, you do it with you know it, at a convention or something like that. And the product that works super well was Jumpstart. I think Jumpstart is one of the so, smartest things Magic has done in so a long time. I would say from a perspective. Yeah. I agree with you. So I love Jumpstart. Yeah. And Jumpstart was actually how I was finally like, okay. Like I'd opened the store and I hadn't played Magic in years. And I was finally like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I like the concept of this Jumpstart format. Because again, coming in from the outside and somebody didn't play it for a long time, it's like, dude, I don't want to play against somebody whose tune deck they've been working on for yep. a year and a half. Yeah. It's not fun for me, right? To just get Molly wallop yep. every single time. It's rough. And the thing that I love about Jumpstart is, to a greater or lesser degree, you are starting on equal footing. Yep. Right? You take your two packs, I take my two packs, we shuffle them together and we play. Yep. This is not tuned, this is not anything. No. And, and and, and the decks are themed. And the decks are themed. So the mechanics are a little more limited. And honestly, uh, G-Schwager, it's that, I think Jumpstart is that in some ways. Like, I currently do Jumpstart with my six-year-old. He picks his decks and then makes me choose them randomly. Uh, because if you've never played games with a young child, prepare to lose. Um, it's, it's a whole thing. It's... But it's that. It's, it's pretty approachable in that regard. So that's from a perspective, but now, I feel like there's, the, there's another shoe. The issue here to me though, is like when I've tried to get stuff and what I need, and, and what would be great is, like somebody else brought up in the chat about like having good players come in mm. and things like that. So here's the problem with the good players and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you guys out and I love you all. <laughs> Y'all are assholes about stuff sometimes. Yeah. Okay? And what happens is, is I go, I think Jumpstart's a really good format for teaching new players to, to play Magic. and Almost to a person, all of my all of my really experienced magic players are like, mm. I just threw it in my mouth a little, and they all, because all of them, almost to a person, hate jumpstart. Which that they hate it, which is funny to me, right? And that's that's the thing is I'm like, I wonder why. Like, for example, theme boosters. Again, if you're looking at it not from the I want to make money now, standpoint, theme boosters make me want to throw up a little bit. Here's the thing, though. So. Again, coming from the outside, yeah. where the idea is I'm trying to build a deck in a general thingy. Yes. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Right? Giving somebody some theme boosters yeah. to be like, here's a general theme for this set. Right? Yeah. Like in Comic Out, when they didn't for Comic Out, it was like ninjas. Yep. Yeah. Here are some freaking ninjas. Yep. Start here, get two of these ninja th theme boosters. They're going to be all different and get some ninjas yeah. and start there. Well, <coughs> but the, the thing is, is again, jump starts to see the same thing as, as a couple of these ones. The products that are aimed at the newer people, yeah. a lot of times, like, just are railed upon by the community so yeah. much. When you're an experienced magic player, where it's like, 
no. And I'm like, you understand, like, this is the thing that's going to get people in, right? Yeah. Well, and as, as we're seeing in the YouTube chat here, like, competitively, if you're wanting high-level, complex, really intense strategic magic, Jumpstart is in a lot of ways not that. No, now, it's not. I will say, William, whether or not I'm doxing my son right now, I don't know how that works. This is my first time ever on a stream, so I'm having fun figuring this out as we go. Uh, so we were playing. He had just two random decks shuffled together. He had like a blue, it was the Power Stone deck out of Brothers War. So okay. it's artifacts and Power Stones. And the white soldier deck. What he was doing is he had, and I could go into the cards here, but I'll just stick to the mechanics. He had a card that let him bounce an artifact from play back to his hand. And what he was doing was he got into a loop of unearthing things from his graveyard. Normally that card gets exiled at the end of the term. He would bounce it back to his hand, replay it. When it entered, he copied it with another ability that he had. This is jumpstart. And he's got an artifact bounce copy <laughs> loop going on, coming out of his graveyard to the point that he stalls me out of the game and wins. Now, yes, did I read all those cards for him and coach him on this? Yes. But there is some potential complexity there. It's for for my fellow experienced magic players, may I offer you this to consider? These set jumpstart boosters that all of you are so <laughs> about uh, and, and that a lot of people don't enjoy, they are booster packs plus land. Yep. That's really what they are because what it is is it's a pack. It's got a random rare of that color. Mm -hmm. Now, they are severely limited in some ways. They are not all created equal. For example, given the nature of Jumpstart, March in the Machine Jumpstart could not have battles and could not have flip cards. Okay. Because it has to be playable out of the pack. Yes. So you can't have anything double-sided. That means you're missing two of the biggest mechanics for of March set. of the Machine. Yeah. So for some of the sets, huge bummer. Lord of the Rings plays perfectly in Jumpstart. Ring Tempting works yep. great. A Mass works great. The various mechanics play really well together. And it's, to me, it's just another way of opening packs. Yeah. Now, and you know, who doesn't want more basic lands? Uh, you know, that's, those are always fun to me. But I, in terms of those introductory products, I like what they've done with Jumpstart. I think it's really interesting that they did make the choice. Jumpstart has, according to Wizards, officially replaced the uh, theme boosters. Okay. That's the new theme booster in their Which mind. all really Jumpstart is, is yeah, they're theme boosters. They're theme like... boosters, exactly, but randomized. Yeah. They're theme boosters, but you don't know what you're getting, which from a business model I get because it incentivizes you to want to get more. For example, I buy four Jumpstart boosters. I get green, red, white, and black because there's going to be a list per color for each set mm -hmm. normally. What am I chasing? I'm chasing that blue one. Right. So I'm probably going to go get some more and try to chase that blue list yeah. in, in that regard. And so I like them as a product. I think they can be a lot of fun to play, you know, and, and it's that question of that I, complexity. I would just say to, to our, our, our competitive magic players, our experienced magic players, don't down on those products as much as you do, because some of y'all do it awful loud, And too. please not in front of new people. <laughs> this is the thing is, like, I, I am a huge thing of without new players – our hobby dies. Mm -hmm. And I really sincerely believe, I think Magic the Gathering, I am not exaggerating in my mind, this is my opinion, is the greatest game ever made. I think as a wow, game system. A, that I, is a bold, bold statement. And I play a lot of video games and like I am loving Kill Team. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've gotten into Warhammer 40K yep. Kill Team recently, having a ton of fun putting those together. But I, I've been playing Magic for over 20 years. And are there ups, are there downs, are there problems with it? But the game itself, the thing, Dr. Richard Garfield, PhD, uh, that was redundant, but whatever, put together is a really, and, and I respect that, and you are free to disagree with me, and many will, and I'm okay with that. Is this my first time people are gonna come at me in the comments? I'm kind of, no, wait, wait I'm till, kind of excited for this. A, wait till he puts the clip of this up on YouTube, and it's like, this is the, Magic is the greatest game Who ever. is this nerd <laughs> with his Mount Rainier hat? Doesn't know what he's talking about, get him off of there. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna choose to not walk this back, because I really do believe that. However, Magic players could kill Magic, mm -hmm. because, if every interaction a new player has, if they sit down with their random pile of cards and the interaction that they get 
is, let me say this that I really like, an interaction I almost never see at a play table at Gamers Heaven. Now, people yeah. at the counter talking over products they do or don't like that you're addressing here, I think is a very fair criticism, of myself included sometimes. But at a play table at Gamers Heaven, this is one of the things that I love. You will see people, they'll finish a game, and then somebody might say, hey, maybe you want to think about doing this card a little bit differently yeah. here. But it's not what I do see at some shops, which is, I can't believe you're running that in the middle of a game. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's like, and again, there goes somebody who could have had a ton of fun playing this game. During the but. games, I don't see that. And I know a lot of our regular Magic players actually very intentionally bring in various power level yes. decks. Oscar which, has varying levels yes. specifically for that. For this, because they're like, okay, you're new. I'm not gonna play this level seven, like power yep. level seven, bonkers, whatever, against you, because that, because what are you, you're playing this pre-con. Okay, cool. Yep, I'm um, gonna get bears out. Now, I will That's say, my, you know. um, I think that Jumpstart's a great product for new players. I think that, actually, I think the Commander Precons are a good product for new players yeah. with an asterisk. Again, I think 100-card decks are, yeah. are kind of intimidating. But in some ways, it's the new way to learn magic. No, the way no. I talk to people today yeah, is they is. learn magic sitting, like, it's like uh, doing D&D for the first time. The DM might know what they're doing. You know, or the game master, if it's if it's a non D and D game, might know what they're doing, and they're teaching everybody else. Like, uh, you know, Gator Pete, we had the chance to do Monster of the Week. Yeah. You know, and and Lev was the one who really knew how to play that, yep. and the rest of us were kind of learning as we went. That's how a lot of people learn magic now. Is the one guy at the table is doing a lot of work and reading a lot of magic cards because they're they've got these hundred card commander decks, yeah. you know, and they're all just like, what does this do over and over and over again? But then you do that first really cool play where you are about to die, but then you wipe the board or something and you're like, I love this game. This is incredible, yep. you know? Hey nerds, thanks for watching. Visit GamersHeavenPNW.com for our merch store, which you can get cool shirts like this and rep some of my awesome art. Also, like and subscribe for more content so we can make more videos for you.